Big shout to the ghosts and the ghost sets on this episode. We talk about the Devil's Ride reality show. Was it real? Was it fake? A lot of people have asked me over the years, was the Laughing Devils a real club? Will we get into it on this episode of Demons Row TV? And no, oh yeah, we ghosting, baby. Big shout to the ghosts and the ghost sets. Welcome to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture, where we cover everything motorcycle club involved. I'm Sos the Ghost. I'm your host for the evening. And today we're going to talk about the Devil's Ride reality show. For many years, people have been asking me, was it real? Was it fake? And truthfully, I did not know the answer if the laughing devils was a real club well i have insight now we have an actual source we have footage from mitch smiley from hard intentions follow his channel his channel is really dope we're going to be doing some work together he did a lot of time in prison over 20 years and the knowledge that he's given out on his channel you know is really dope he's from the biker lifestyle and we're going to be doing some fun stuff coming up in the future so follow him i'm gonna have that link down in the description hard intentions but we have a clip from his show he sits down with fuzzy from a club that does not want to be mentioned but it's a top club and he was on the show and he has firsthand knowledge of what's going on so we're going to play that footage but the first thing i want you to do like we always do on this channel is to hit me with that pound ghost in and that lets me know you're alive and well sitting on twos doing what you do or just part of the demons row community one of my ghosts shout to all my new subscribers welcome to the row make sure you hit that bell so you get the notification hit the like button shout to everybody that's been copping the demons row t-shirts get them at www.demonsroad.com and let's get into this footage club, they didn't want us being involved in it they didn't want us being part of it you know and stuff like that we went back and forth and yeah. finally it was like uh you know we wound up uh you know seeing seeing uh the the more positive light to it you know i guess right. and uh and the producer uh he's uh his the the producer the main producer the executive producer is jason herbie and jason he was uh he was the older brother on a tv show uh the wonder years I remember you know? yeah so he's I he's been watched, in, yeah, i actually watched the devil's ride when i was in prison too oh right on yeah well jason you know there was another guy uh, adam vetri and stuff that are very very career-minded people up in hollywood they, they do so many different projects and they so they wanted us to do the here thing and some people thought it was hokey and some people thought it, you know we we're getting a lot of we get a lot of people from around the country going hey what's up with these two clubs you know this club doing this here and doing it there you know they're, they're making motorcycle clubs look bad and stuff it's like hey it's none of your business anyway it's their club you know so so when uh it came time and they wanted us to to go on the show i was all for it because it was a way that's like uh you know a lot of people don't they don't know what um there's a difference between reality and script, you know, right. and and with reality, like uh, the, like uh, you go on like the, the Price is Right. It's a reality show, but yeah. the thing the thing is, they pick the people beforehand who are going to be playing the reality part. Right. Okay. So it's like fake reality. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So so. So when you're doing a TV show, and the reality shows were really big at this at that point, you know, in the in the teens, you know, that 
uh, you still have to have some kind of storyline. You can't just have shit that's going on like a like this complete chaos in every which direction without having some kind of storyline. Right. You know. Yeah. So, so in a way, the way that they would they would set it up is like they would say like, uh, you know, all right, Fuzzy, you and Smiley are going to be doing, doing a uh, you know a conference on the phone or something like that. There. Right. You know, and they may tell me, okay, that someone's going to come through the door. Someone, someone's going to bust through the door with a gun and and they're going to like kidnap me while we're doing this conversation. Right. Okay. But they want to see how you're going to react to it because you don't know that this is going to happen. Yeah. You see? So so there's no script for you to follow. It's just like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What are you doing? You know, like, yeah. you know, what do I do? You know, like, so, so, you know, so when you got, a reality like that there was actually people in on the show that went to the hospital there's people that uh they got bruised up pretty bad yeah um some people uh got seriously hurt there's a lot of a lot of feelings that got hurt you really? know oh yeah yeah so, was, uh, uh, were you the only guy from your club in that uh in that show no we had i had uh we had uh let's see we had four four other guys that were with me mostly so, and i mean so the other there was like two clubs like competing. I yeah. only seen uh, I think season one, you know. Then I got transferred and that we didn't have the but uh so are those real clubs that they the, they were real clubs at the at the time, you know, like the 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 what you call it, the laughing devils. Right. They actually they're the ones that brought, kind of brought it together because they they're the ones that started it. They were uh they were they were a club that was trying to so trying to help the uh military people. You know, yeah. and uh, and then they got approached by doing this show, and then and then you know, like anything, you you got to keep the storyline going to something, you know, right, right. to keep the, to keep the viewership going. Can't so like, hey, here's a motorcycle club. Look, they ride motorcycles and yeah, oh look at them guys <laughs> over there drinking beer and fighting. I mean, it's got to be some kind of you know, you you, yeah. you got to come up. Yeah, you got to come up with some stuff. And, uh, and trust me, like there was one scene in the thing where they were downtown and uh. uh this guy came up and just started taking pictures, and uh, this dude was a prospect for one of the clubs. Man, fucking Colcock, this photographer who had no idea that <laughs> that they were filming a, a, you know, he probably knew what they were filming, but he he was being instead of coming up and saying, "Hey, can I get some pictures of you guys?" Yeah. He just came up and put a camera in people's faces and started snapping pictures, like a, uh, uh, you know, you know, like those guys that go out and follow movie stars and stuff. The, yeah, yeah, paparazzi type, paparazzi and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he just got he just got knocked knocked to the ground. You know, it was like, and uh, and there was some there was some serious uh, some real fights that took place uh, with people that weren't even in the show. There's people that didn't like us filming the show that were, you know, in different outlets that that were making statements and stuff. So. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they never canceled the show. They never ended the show. It, it just it just stopped, you know. Yeah, I and, remember, uh, uh, like, I was in a dorm living at the time, you know, and so they have a TV room for the Southern Mexicans and the whites and a TV room for the Northern Mexicans and the blacks, and then the Pisces got it. So the whites got the TV every other day. So once a week when it came on, you know, um, you know I'm kind of, you know, I can be kind of aggressive. I, I just tell, you know, guys would be complaining about, I want to watch this. I want to watch that. I just go in the TV room, turn a channel, say, we're watching this, sit down, shut the fuck up or get out of the TV room. But on a Mexican night, you know, I had this, uh, this guy, he's a friend of mine, you know, South Sider Mexican. He was in his forties, you know, and, and, uh, yeah. and he, and he he'd come in and go, Hey Holmes, you're watching the devil's ride tonight, Holmes. I go, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, some of his, uh, his south side, be like, hey man, I want to watch this shit. He go, hey, Holmes, just get to, it's Holmes night, you know. <laughs> so, hey, Holmes, you know? <laughs> and, uh, Holmes is watching the devil's ride. <laughs> so there you have it. It was a real club, straight from the source. They disbanded for whatever reason. I seen some things going on where there may be chapters in other areas, but not in that San Diego area, but it was real clubs. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Listen, I'm not one of these people from the, the school of everything has to be quiet. I think they try to do something you know and make money and have a good time and i think it's dope you know what i mean so let me know what you think about it in the comments of course we're gonna have our old school bikers that you know 
are against it it's making the culture look bad everything makes the culture look bad to certain people and you know it's only so much you could do with those type of people they're going to be negative about whatever the situation is you know so there's not really much you could say about it but um here you go from an official diamond he lets you know what's going on laughing devils was a real club all these clubs were real clubs but you know it had some script into it or whatever so i hope you enjoyed that follow hard intentions he has a really good channel and thank you for tuning in to demons row tv the holy grail of mc culture like subscribe and comment and no yeah we ghosting baby